welcome back. Uh, in the last video we have seen uh, how to find uh, inverse Laplace transform of uh, elementary functions uh, by certain methods. These are ad hoc methods. So already you know uh, because you know the Laplace transform of uh, elementary functions and uh, combination some simpler functions. So because of that using them and uh, convolution theorem some property some of the property for example convolution theorem which you use to find the inverse Laplace transform so far. So, so that is basically we have done by a partial fraction method and uh, uh, other one is uh, heavy side expansion theorem. So it is basically generalization of uh, uh, partial fraction method and the other one is a convolution theorem which you can use if you have if you look at the if you have uh, Laplace transform as a product of two uh, Laplace transforms for which you know uh, inverse Laplace transform. So you, you take the convolution of that which is the property of the Laplace transform which you by using that you can find the Laplace inverse. And finally, so if you do not know any of so if nothing works uh, you cannot recognize uh, 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 if you cannot use any of these properties to find the Laplace inverse you do not have any other choice the general method that is uh, finding. Uh, using the definition of uh, Laplace in inverse that is uh, f of t is a 1 by 2 pi a times. So integral uh, over a curve that is in the complex plane that is c minus i infinity to c plus i infinity f bar of s into e power s t ds. So this is a complex integration. So this if you calculate so you will uh, end up getting uh, residues sum of all the residues in certain specific special contour that is called uh, Bromwich contour. Uh, that is what uh, I have shown in the last video. So within this contour if you actually evaluate the you use the contour integration technique and evaluate this uh, integral over this contour you will end up getting this uh, contour in this integral an uh, inversion integral. So which is a sum of all the residues at, uh, uh, at different values of s at those poles, poles inside this uh, Bromwich contour that is uh, how uh, so that is if you know already co complex function theory. So you exactly know what I am talking about. So this is basically finding all the residues within this Bromwich contour. If you have all the poles, uh, poles uh, at these at these poles, if you find the residues, the uh, contribution of these poles for the function f bar of s into e power s t will give you the inverse transform. So that's what uh, that's how exactly uh, you can get this uh, Laplace inversion if you know the uh, if you know complex function theory already. If you do not know, let us review with the next uh, 2 hours, uh, let us review what is uh, how we do this uh, complex integration. So let me start with uh, complex function uh, complex function theory. So uh, let me start with a complex, complex function theory. I will only review uh, this uh, complex function theory. Uh, so start with uh, analytic functions, so analytic functions. So what do you mean by analytic function, let me explain. So if you have uh, first of all you should have a function means function it should have a domain that is usually you have a real line to real line. So if it is a real valued function, real valued function over the real line. So real valued function means it is a domain the range is codomain or range is uh, part of the real line. So here and uh, here you have a domain over which is defined. So f of x y equal to f of x. So f of x is if it is a real value is a real valued function of a real variable x belongs to r. So this is how, this is how you represent a function. So if I same way if I do look at this uh, if I start with let me say before I do it let me use this as a complex function. So you can uh, if you say complex value if you put it from f is from r to c then you represent this f of x x belongs to r as f of x as uh, a complex valued function. So because it is a f given any x, f of x is a complex valued function is a because it is a complex number you represent like this which is the plane okay. So if you have like this f of x because it is a complex valued function you call this ux plus i times v of y. So let us you represent complex function as complex value as x power x plus i y, i is actually root minus 1. So this is how you represent this as a plane complex plane one is x other one is y so that any point uh, that is uh, x y you represent this as x plus i y that is uh, you identify every point in this plane as uh, this complex number x plus i y that is so in that sense uh, if I have a real value a complex valued function of a real variable x and this is the uh, function function value is 
uh, real part and imaginary part with uh, of course uh, i is the imaginary part. So, you have uh, this called real part and this is the imaginary part of f. So, this is how you have a representation for this function. But if you if I remove this one here and put it as a complex value. So, then what should be that case? So, I, I should uh, I should simply replace z here z by x by z. So, x by c complex uh, uh, plane and we do not write this as x, x when we usually we write for a real variable. So, if I write this you put z. So, if we put z here and what is there? It is a complex value x is a f is a function of x plus i y. So, this is actually you write uh, as f of z and this is instead of u of x uh, you what you get is a real part as which is also depends on function of x and y plus i times v of function of x and y. So, this is how you represent this function if z belongs to a complex plane okay. If uh, z is f is from complex value to this is called a complex valued function of a complex variable c okay because z is a variable f of z is also complex valued function because it has a real part and imaginary part. So, this is how you see these functions from c to c because c you identify as a as a plane. So, you can also you may see that this is also uh, from r true to r 2 you can also think of like this f of x y as such you can think of this as f of x y which is u of x y comma v of x y. If you think like this as your function x y this point is actually in this uh, real line real uh, uh, this plane and then uh, then finally u v that is also in this plane. So, in that sense f is f you can think of uh, r 2 to r 2 real valued function of course, is the vector valued function you have two values vector valued function of uh, of a vector. So, you have a vector here. So, f of this vector if you view like this this is a vector valued function of a vector in r 2. So, you can see that both uh, looks like same, but uh, as algebraically they may be same in that way, but uh, topologically they are different in that sense uh, means or if you see for example, uh, uh, continuity uh, limit limits of these functions uh, these are all uh, you can usual way that uh, you define limit of uh, z goes to z naught means z I represent as uh, x y to uh, z naught if you call the x naught plus i y naught this is going to be x naught y naught. So, as this point goes to this point so like here so a some function of x y is same as f of x naught. So, if it is continuous this is the usual uh, r 2 to r 2 functions functions of uh, many variable multi variable uh, function. So, uh, so in the usual way so you can uh, this limits continuity because there are continuity is nothing but uh, limits limits are all same. So, topologically they are same. So, they are different uh, uh, algebraically uh, if, if I talk in mathematics language. So, if you, uh, you have uh, uh, so topologically they are actually same, but they are algebraically they are different. So, that sense uh, so matter that is the difference between uh, these two, but even uh, topologically only uh, open sets closed set they are uh, same but uh, when you talk about the differentiability they have a difference here. So, what you have a, di a differentiability from R 2 to R 2 is you have a derivative d f by d x, x is a vector x is at x equal to x, x is here now in R 2. So, this is actually from this is a matrix that is a matrix is uh, do f by do x 1 do f by do y 1. So, let us call this f 1 and f 2, f 1 f 2 is uh, like u v. So, let me use this uh, d u by do x 1 here d u by do y 1 here do v by do x 1 and do v by do y 1 x x 1 y 1 uh, rather x y x y if you call uh, let me use x y as a point in in the plane. So, then you have this x y is a is a, so, let me use this x, x bar, x bar is where x bar is actually x y okay. So, this is how if this uh, matrix if this is a non if this exists all the partial derivatives exist and if they are continuous if they are exist if they exist and as a matrix then you say that is differentiable here okay. But from uh, complex value to complex value there is a difference there is a it is entirely different. So, if you have this uh, partial derivatives exist partial derivatives means uh, 
at x y at some point you have uh, this direction this partial derivative for u for in this uh, y direction partial derivatives if you have then all these four derivatives exist then that is the derivative of uh, f at x uh, in from r to to r to function. But if you look at from c to c it is entirely different that is called analytic function differentiability at a point means uh, at a point means this one if it is differentiable. So, you have uh, at a point here in the complex plane if it is a if it is differentiable at this point and it is no other point it is not differentiable then you say it is it is actually same as this differentiability it is uh, differentiability from c to c is same as differentiability from r2 to r2. But in the analyticity so differentiability at a point and also in every neighborhood of a point if it is differentiable inside from c to c then it is different. So, the word how it is different from this uh, derivative here multivariable derivative if you actually see this one you view in all directions you have uh, same amplitude and there is a small twist amplitude. Uh, so, as uh, if you view this as a uh, limit this is your z, z is x y uh, all directions it is possible to so you have only here only 2 directions you need, but here in all directions you should have the same amplitude. So, the, uh, the derivative exists means that is d f by d z for example. So, this exists at a point z means in all directions you have a same uh, kind of uh, uh, amplitude and there will only only thing is uh, it will have a twist ok. So, you so it is all directions so, so let me uh, I will not uh, confuse you here. So, here you need only 2 directions this should exist here in all directions it should uh, the derivative should exist and it should have the same value. So, that is where uh, the difference between analyticity and differentiability from R to R uh, is, is different ok. So, that is why we call this analytic function if you have a differentiable function f at a point in the neighbor at every neighborhood of a point if it is differentiable you call it uh, analytic function. So, analytic function means f of z is analytic. So, before I do this uh, let me let d be a domain d be a domain domain means uh, open connected set open connected set connected set open set means so every point you can have a neighborhood that is entirely into it this is the usual open sets in uh, the plane like uh, this one any point inside I can always find a open set open uh, neighborhood that is a circle circular disk which is entirely into it if it is inside. So, that is open and you can take any point to any point I can always connect it which is entirely the line is entirely into the domain then you say that it is connected. For example, if you consider these two this point if I take this point I cannot connect it uh, by any curve which is entirely in, in this uh, because this part is outside. So, this is not connected ok. So, so open connected set means that is that is called domain. So, if you have a domain f z is analytic analytic at uh, let us say z naught if f of z is uh, differentiable differentiable means usual derivative. So, derivative exists at that point not only at uh, differentiable in the in, in every neighborhood of every uh, neighborhood uh, differentiable for all z belongs to the neighborhood of uh, some neighborhood of z naught for some epsilon positive. So, some epsilon neighborhood you take every point I can always differentiate uh, around that point. So, as a so in that sense if you have one point means in the neighborhood of that at some neighborhood at every point it is differentiable then you say that it is analytic. So, this is one characterization of this is the first definition of analytic function and you cannot uh, check all this uh, every time uh, what whether the function is uh, differentiable or not ok. For example, if consider f of z equal to uh, e power z ok this is differentiable function or polynomials z square z power n ok. So, like this sin z cos z. So, these are the things you have to define I hope you can just go through some books and uh, for example, uh, uh, what is that book called uh, Churchill you can uh, you can look into uh, introduction to complex uh, variables uh, uh, by R with Churchill ok. Churchill uh, you can read and uh, by reading you will understand. So, I will give you the briefly the review of uh, all this complex function theory. So, that when you are reading the book you will understand what is, uh, is actually happening technical much of the technical details you can find in this textbook ok. So, this is one uh, def basic definition of uh, analyticity 
to check whether the given function is analytic you do not have to do this uh, every time to this definition this fundamental definition instead you have another characterization that is called uh, CR equations CR equations because you can always find partial derivatives these partial derivatives given f of z I can find u of x y and v of x y. So, u v you can find the partial derivatives as a functions of two variable x one y as a real variable. So, if you do that dou u by dou uh, dou u by dou y equal to dou v by dou x and dou u by dou x equal to minus dou v by dou y. So, if you if these functions these partial derivatives exist and if they are continuous and satisfying the CR equations okay. Um, they exist and uh, dou u by dou x. So, let me call this u y u x uh, v x and v y all continuous continuous partial derivatives exist and they satisfy this if and only if and f of z is which is equal to u plus i v uh, is analytic analytic at z. Here also you have to calculate at at uh, z which is equal to x plus i y or x y at x y okay. At x y if you say that is same as so this is a characterization of uh, through CR equations this is Cauchy Riemann equations let me write this is a Cauchy Riemann equation. So equations uh, these are the equations if you if you can check this and you see that this partial derivatives exist under continuous then it is actually analytic. So, this is a theorem which you can uh, prove by basic means. So, if you look into this books you can understand this is one of the characterization uh, to check the analyticity of the complex function uh, any complex valued function of a complex variable f of z. So, f of z is a complex valued function of a function a complex variable z. So, this is one and uh, what you need is uh, for the Laplace transform inverse Laplace transform you need to integrate. So, for the integration what you will start the integration what exactly the integration. So, what we have is analytic functions you have two characterization now one is this analytic basic definition other one is the uh, CR Riemann equations. There is one more uh, characterization uh, that I will I will come to that when I when we need this okay. So, maybe I will give now itself. So, another characterization is uh, if uh, f is analytic if and only if at, at z not for example okay at z if, if you want at z if you take if and only if uh, f of z is analytic at z if and only if if I have f of z has a Taylor series just like you have a Taylor series uh, what is the Taylor series which you can easily see n is from 0 to infinity uh, this is uh, f n derivative set uh, uh, z z okay uh, n equal to 0 that is f of z. So, let me use at z naught z equal to z naught let me put then you have this Taylor series around this. So, f of this is derivatives at one point divided by n factorial into uh, z minus z naught power n. So, if you have series representation like this. Uh, for every neighborhood of some neighborhood of uh, z naught uh, if you have for some neighborhood of z naught if you can have this representation this Taylor series then you say that this is also analytic. So, this is another characterization okay if you can have for example e power z which you can see that uh, n is from 0 to infinity uh, this is like uh, uh, z power n divided by n factorial. So, z by around 0 this is uh, this is around z naught okay f of z equal to f of z naught and equal to 0 when you put uh, plus f dash of z naught divided by 1 factor into z minus z naught and so on. So, this is uh, this is exp exponential function is in the neighborhood of 0 you have uh, this is uh, this means you have this that means you have a Taylor series around 0 Maclaurin series. So, that means this is analytic analytic at uh, z equal to 0 okay. So, th that means in the neighborhood of 0 it is also analytic. So, that way that is how you see the three characterization of this uh, analytic functions so, where the first one is the definition second one is the Cauchy Riemann equations and third one is uh, this uh, Taylor series. So, you have a Taylor series okay Taylor series for the Laplace uh, uh, for the function complex valued function f, f of z. Once you have these three characterizations now let me use the what is the integration integration of so what we do what do you mean by integration what do you know integration. 
integration what you know is uh, if you start with the real valued function f of x if you have f of x let us say it defined on a to b a and b x belongs to a b so that means it is a real valued x belongs to a b so it is a real valued function so real valued function or uh, it can be complex valued function of a real variable f of x is uh, it can be uh, we do not know no. so first of all you know that it is a real valued function on a real variable so this is uh, by definition if you actually see what do you mean by this is area under the curve so this is the curve you can represent this as a curve between a b you break this into uh, so equal parts as a as a rectangles and finally take this uh, epsilon the delta x goes to 0 you sum it it is like a area under this curve is exactly you see this as a limit delta x goes to 0 and what you have is this summation f at x i okay f at x i uh, times x i minus x i minus 1 so that is exactly your delta x i okay so this x i star is one uh, one of them so this is between this here somewhere here if this is x i this is x i plus 1 these two points in between you take and take any point or x i itself any point you can take on this that is this and i is running from 1 to n so like that you finitely you make and finally you know allow this delta x i the biggest one biggest one of them maximum of them maximum of all the, or any one of them in all of this each part has to go to 0 if you choose this you see that this is going to be the definition of this uh, this area under the curve that is exactly you learnt in the calculus this is your uh, uh, integration so if i have if once you have this uh, this is a riemann integral this is a finite integral so you, there is something called improper integral improper integral is you also know that what is improper integral improper integral means it's going to be from uh, minus infinity to infinity or zero to infinity finite to infinity or minus infinity to infinity if you this uh, fx dx as uh, the limit of a finite sum so for example zero to a fx dx this meaning i know from this definition usual uh, integration definition of a real function of, of a real variable now what i do is this means by definition this is actually as a goes to infinity this is the meaning so the uh, same way if you have a minus infinity infinity you allow b, uh, b to a or a to b you put it here and you allow a goes to infinity and b goes to uh, a goes to minus infinity and b goes to infinity okay so like that you can if you can view this is uh, well defined now finally you look at the, its limit and you, what you see is this is the improper integral so this is what you know from calculus this integral now if i have a function from a real variable to uh, but it is a complex valued function so that means f of x is u of x plus i times v of x so what is the meaning of this integral fx dx of a of a to b this is again the same way you can do but by definition this is actually you split this into a to b uh, ux dx plus i times a to b uh, vx dx or you put it in the same definition because of the finite sum you can always do so let me so by definition you do the same thing so there is a limit delta x i goes to infinity this summation i is uh, k is uh, whichever whatever i used i is from 1 to n if i use delta x i here f of x i star for example uh, if i use this f i x star if i use this uh, u so this delta x i here and u at x i star plus i times uh, v at x i star if i have this this is a finite sum and you can may split it into two parts okay so this is limit delta x i goes to 0 this summation i is from 1 to n u at x i star into delta x i plus i times again limit delta x i goes to 0 so this is uh, legitimate uh, and uh, we so, and you have a two you can split this sum okay as uh, v at x i star delta x i so what you have is finally this is the actual usual definition which you can uh, uh, generalize for a complex valued function but finally you end up getting integral a to b u x dx uh, plus integral a to b i times integral a to b v x dx so you can take this as your definition directly so it is actually true so what you see is if you take this usual way usual definition way if you do uh, 
with this definition if you if you start you end up getting this integral. So, this definition this means complex valued function you simply integrate of a real part imaginary part so that is the meaning of that integral. Now, if I have integral of uh, integral over uh, rather uh, f is from uh, c to c. So, what do you do here? What is the meaning of c to uh, c means what? Uh, c to c means or rather let me do it from c to r first c to r. So, what is the meaning? So, you have a function defined over this and it goes to a real line r okay. This is complex r okay complex to real valued. So, that means you have f of z which is equal to uh, simply some function of u of x y that is it z, z is uh, basically x plus i y. So, you take this x and y put uh, real valued as u of x y imaginary part is 0. So, you can also include c so that we, this is i times v of x y. So, you have a complex value to complex value if you have this is what you have okay. This is how we have a function. Now, what is the meaning of f of z dz over uh, there is no meaning of uh, real because it is not a real line I do not say it is from a to b. So, this is over uh, you have a plane the complex plane let me use some curve this is your curve this is a curve let us say c or let us say gamma. So, gamma is the curve in the complex plane. So, over gamma so you can define this as so how do I define this you need to parameterize uh, this as a gamma. So, first of all you can represent this as a definition because it is a real and imaginary part you first write like this u of x y uh, dz and this is over gamma plus i times uh, over gamma v of x y uh, dz okay. So, this is a, this is a definition this is a, you, can, you can do the same way. So, how do I do this okay let me do not the definition I give directly. So, like here I start with some finite sum. So, this is the usual way you break this as a sum and then finally take the limit that is going to be like this same definition you can apply here. So, what do I do? Uh, you break this uh, gamma as uh, equal parts for example. If you break this into equal parts by definition this limit let me use choose this delta si. So, delta si, si is a uh, arc length for example, delta si goes to 0. So, this is the best starting definition fundamental definition and you break this into finite pieces. So, over each of that finite pieces i let us say i is from 1 to n. So, if you make this delta si and then uh, you have f at some s uh, z uh, z i star. So, z i belongs to here somewhere in this piece on this piece. If you have a curve which you have a piece here at this point I am calling this z i star and this uh, length is delta si. So, again if you any choose this delta si goes to 0. So, like that you break pieces into pieces 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 and finally you add it up that is exactly the definition of this integral okay. So, by manipulation what you end up is if you actually use the parameterization of this curve. So, any curve you see you can parameterize this is actually z of uh, this is a z right this is a curve gamma gamma is from uh, so gamma is a curve in this uh, plane okay in this complex plane. So, parameterization means I try to uh, make a mapping from some a b to uh, the complex plane. So, at a this is the point at b it is a it is a real valued uh, uh, complex valued function of a real variable that is exactly the curve. So, at when you as you move from a to b I move on from on this curve this from this point to this point okay. So, so if you can make like this gamma so gamma t which is x of t plus i times y of t. So, t belongs to let us say a to b if I can make like this as a gamma of t. So, when you when in t equal to a you have x of a y of a that is this point and when you t equal to b x of b y of b that is this end point. So, as you move from a to b this x of t y of t moves along this curve. For example, you take the circle x square plus y square equal to 1 is the circle unit circle. So, if I can write like this uh, as a cos theta y equal to uh, let me use cos t y equal to sin t. Then what is this one? This is actually your representation of the curve. So, you have uh, if you with this representation clearly x square plus y square equal to 1. So, this is your curve and uh, so you have a parameterization is gamma of t which is a unit circle which is 
cos t plus i times sin t. So, t belongs to 0 to 2 pi. So, this is your uh, parametric representation of this curve uh, circle circle okay, the complex plane. So, in the same way if you do eventually I will not look into the details. So, you will look into the uh, uh, textbook that is Churchill I suggest you to look into the Churchill you finally see that this is actually equal to once you have the parameterization. So, you see that uh, now the gamma is from uh, this from the complex plane is your domain now you bring it uh, it is over a b. So, uh, you will go to a b parameterization f wherever z is there you put this parameterization okay z is so let z is the gamma gamma means z belongs to gamma gamma is uh, gamma is basically z okay. So, z of t is x of t and uh, y of t. So, you write x of t plus i times y of t in the place of what is dz. So, because z is this z of t and you have a dz by dz you need dz by dt is same as x dash of t dx by dt plus i times dy by dt okay. So, dz is simply uh, z dash of t that is dz by dt into dt if I multiply with dt that is exactly your dz in the place of dz okay. So, this is actually one can show that these two are same okay. So, let me not show that so you can uh, go look into the thing books and uh, get it. So, this is exactly uh, and this is uh, this is a complex uh, uh, number okay. So, this is a z dash of t dt is your dz and if you have this modulus here what you do is you put this modulus z dash of t into dt with modulus you can replace. So, so if you are if you are uh, if you want to have a curve length you take a curve curve length uh, then what you have is this d mod dz is the curve length that is actually same as you would remove this f mod f of mod z dash of t dt and whatever is uh, t is the parametric value of the curve okay. Let me not use the use that this is anyway f of z dz this integral this is the meaning. So, this is the definition this equivalence you can easily see just by basic definition you can come finally here okay because of this parameterization. So, if you have a complex uh, valued function on a complex variable and uh, so that is over integral means integral means over a curve f of z dz meaning is the integral over its parameterization from a to b and this is what you have. So, like this you can once you have this uh, meaning for the integration of a integration over a curve. So, this curve may be either open curve like this or closed curve like this any curve, but it is we assume that it is smooth because we are differentiating because it is differentiable continuously differentiable uh, parameterization if you have that is uh, so that you can use here in the in the place of dz I am using z dash if you are assuming that z dash of t exists and it is continuous so that this integral is that is inside this integral if you know that is a continuous function you know that the integration is guaranteed. So, it is well defined. So, for that reason we assume that we assume this curve is uh, continuously differentiable curve that is also called smooth curve okay. So, if you take such a smooth curve gamma uh, we have this meaning for this integral. So, once you have this meaning for this integrals so we will uh, what we have is uh, in the this uh, let me give some results of uh, complex function theory Most, uh, basic important thing is uh, Cauchy uh, theorem that theorem tells you that if uh, analytic function what happens to this integral okay. So, if f is analytic function so f of z is analytic analytic uh, in a domain d in d okay in a domain d let us say. So, if you have a domain means open connected and uh, gamma be a closed curve a closed curve in d. So, you take any closed curve inside this gamma okay then integral of uh, f of z dz and this is over gamma because it is a closed curve I gave a notation like this I put a round on the integral sign this is actually 0 for every gamma inside d. So, this is the important theorem uh, is called uh, Cauchy theorem. So, this uh, this is the basic uh, uh, 
basic thing, a basic uh, fundamental uh, result in the complex function theory. So using this, everything you can derive. Okay. So right, using from this, you can derive. So once you have this, uh, once you mean, uh, once you get this uh, meaningful definition of this integral, uh, you have this Cauchy theorem. And uh, what you can calculate, for example, in, if your gamma is, uh, uh, let us say, if gamma is a, a closed uh, circle, circle of radius of radius r, let us use, say, let us say r, okay. If this is a circle of radius r, if you have with center at 0, okay, radius r, what is this? This is your gamma, gamma is this. And another th uh, convention we use is, if it is a closed curve, we always choose this orientation. You go from this side to this side. This is anti-clockwise. That is a positive orientation because as you move along the curve, the domain that's uh, that's uh, inside the closed domain, which is on your left-hand side. Okay. So this is the positive orientation. If you come from the negative side, that is a negative orientation. So so if you come from this side, that's going to be minus gamma. Gamma is a positive orientation thing. Okay. So. And then uh, one of the property of the integral is uh, minus gamma f of z dz is actually equal to minus of f of z dz over gamma. So if, if you go from negative direction, positive direction, only in a sign change. So that is what uh, uh, that is uh, that is the result you can easily see. So if gamma is such a closed curve, uh, can I find this dz by z minus z naught? So certain functions, if f of uh, z is uh, as one by z over a closed curve or let us say CR, CR is my closed curve, what is this value? Okay. So let me find this value because I know that is a parameterization, this, uh, this, this closed curve is uh, circle is Z of T is uh, cos uh, R cos T because uh, radius is R, R cos T plus I R sin T. Okay. So if I do this, it is going from 0 to 2 pi, DZ is uh, what is dz? This is also called r times e power i t. So this is a, another representation for this complex number. So that is from Euler. Euler representation z is you can always represent e power i uh, i uh, i theta, where uh, x equal to r cos theta, r times i, i e power i theta. So x equal to r cos theta, y equal to r sin theta. So because of this, I have this representation here. And dz is, uh, so you have a, z is a function of t, dz, dz is, you have seen dz is, uh, you have to write z dash of t into dt, right. So there is z dash of t is r times i times e power i t into dt. So you write d in the place of d, r i e power i t dt divided by r is r into e power i t. So this gets cancelled, what you end up is uh, uh, i times into 2 pi i, so 2 pi times i, so i comes out integral 0 to 2 pi dt is 2 pi, so finally you get 2 pi i, okay. So you get like this, so you can over, because of this, uh, because of uh, this uh, easily you can evaluate over a circles, some integrals, okay, because of this integral we can have if f is analytic. Uh, in a domain D, okay, and gamma is a curve in this. D is a domain inside. Gamma is this curve, and suppose it is uh, not differentiable at uh, is not analytic at some z naught, okay. Suppose it is not analytic at z naught, right? Or so f of z is analytic. So let me use this uh, f of z as analytic everywhere inside D, okay, and I simply put as integrand z minus z naught where z naught is here. So that means if this is, if you look at this integrand, this is analytic everywhere except at z0 because of 1 by z minus z0. So 1 by z minus z0 is analytic everywhere except at z0, okay. So this is 0. So this is over gamma dz. If you want to find, evaluate this where if uh, f of z is analytic, analytic in D, okay, then this is the result. So this is a theorem of uh, complex function theory. Based on the Cauchy theorem, you can and this uh, simple result, we can show that this gamma is actually equal to uh, 2 pi i times f of f at z0, okay. 
So, this is easily you can show by rewriting left hand side here f of z I re rewrite f of z minus f of z minus z naught divided by z minus z naught plus f of z naught divided by z minus z naught. So, now I integrate over this gamma and gamma dz dz. I can show I will show that actually this goes to 0 and this is the value what you end up is actually this one 2 pi a times which I use here 2 pi a times f of z naught f of z naught is a constant that comes out you use this. So, only thing here remains in this uh, theorem to prove is this integral has to you can make as small as possible if it is a closed curve ok. So, with that idea we can actually get this result this is a Cauchy integral formula. So, this is Cauchy uh, integral formula. So, this is another result which you can use which you uh, have in the complex function theory and also uh, from this you can easily see there is a Cauchy residue theorem ok. So, let me write directly now Cauchy residue theorem. So, there is a Cauchy residue theorem residue theorem what do you mean by residue residue means and if you if your function f of z is analytic you have a characterization three characterizations you have one of the characterization is having a Taylor series if f of z is analytic you have a Taylor series ok. You have a Taylor series and it does not have no, none of the terms is uh, uh, singular singularity ok. So, everything is like f of z f of z f dash z minus z naught ok. You have z minus z naught if it is around z naught if you look at the analyticity around z naught you have z minus z naught power n you have sigma uh, n is running from uh, 1 to 0 to infinity ok. Some constants of course, you have that is f n derivatives of uh, at z naught divided by n factorial this is what is your Taylor series. Sometimes if you have uh, you can have a representation not only so if f is analytic uh, uh, residue means uh, coefficient of 1 by z minus z naught in your uh, uh, Taylor series. If you if you write a Taylor series and for example, this one if f is analytic I can have this uh, Taylor series and if you look at this integrand this integrand uh, divided by z minus z naught if you put I have z minus z naught ok. So, one cancels you have, what you have is n minus 1 ok. So, if you have n minus 1 what is the coefficient of uh, any when you put n equal to 0 coefficient that is that is simply 1 right f of f uh, n equal to 0 that is simply uh, f of f at z naught by 0 factorial which is 1 that is the coefficient by z minus z naught plus f dash at z naught by 1 factorial into z minus z naught power 0 that is 1 or like that you go on ok. This is actually uh, nice of this is a, the, no other this does not have any singular point because 1 by z minus z naught these are all powers of f double dash of z naught by 2 factorial z minus z naught all remaining are z minus z naught square cubes and so on. So, this is the term. So, this coefficient of 1 by z minus z naught is actually a residue Cauchy residues residues that is called the residue of this function f of z ok this function this whole function ok f of z by z minus z naught. So, if f is not analytic you may have if f is analytic you have this Taylor series if f is not analytic you may end up having uh, like this these terms if it is like this it is a simple pole if you have if f is not analytic but also have uh, let us say some other coefficient let me use uh, c's ok so c minus 2 divided by z minus z naught square this then you say that if f of z is like this and if I use this as uh, let us say c uh, minus 1 c 0 some coefficients and you have like this if you have like this z minus z naught and so on these are nice like a Taylor series and left hand side you have poles. So, if it is like this it is a pole of order 2 ok. So, still you see that this c minus 1 that is the residue of this function f of z and if you have if it is not analytic at all if it is uh, if it is still uh, not analytic is some more uh, poles if you have if you have infinite series like this then you still that is called Lorentz series for the function f of z. So, only thing is you have a series you have a, you have like this you have a z, z naught within this except this point and within this this Lorentz series is valid which is 
uh, convergent. So, this series is convergent at every point inside this uh, domain D except at Z0 inside this okay inside this. So, such a thing is called Laurent series in the Laurent series the coefficient of 1 by Z minus Z0 is your residue. So, uh, if you can get this Laurent series now we can read uh, the textbook and uh, can if you get the if it is a if it is analytic function you can have a get a taylor series so that all these negative powers will be zero so that uh, your uh, residue is actually zero because there is no negative powers okay and if you have these uh, negative finitely many negative terms then it is called pole of order some finite order it's like it goes from up to 1 by z minus z not power m and the, there is no other negative terms this side you say that it is a pole of order m. If you still have a negative terms this side that is a pole of infinite order that is called essential singularity. So, they have a different kinds of singularity you can think if it is a point where it is not uh, analytic it is called a singular point and first of all first singular point is it is a pole which is only simple singular point if you have a Taylor, you have a Laurent series expansion you can if you expand that function you will get like this up to here. So, pole of order m means you will get uh, expression like this expansion up to uh, up to negative powers m. If you can get all the negative powers in the negative left hand side uh, negative powers infinite negative powers you say that is uh, essential singularity okay. So, these are three different singular points and uh, in the in the complex in the residue theorem tells you that if uh, f of z is <coughs> analytic analytic in uh, D open open connected set D except except at uh, Z0, Z1, Z2 up to Zn some finite points inside D in D okay. Then integral over f of Zd Z over this gamma. So, gamma contains okay. So, let me use uh, comma inside uh, they are they are uh, except at this points in D and and this gamma contains this is closed curve this is a closed curve gamma is a closed curve this z0 z1 z2 zn belongs to this closed gamma. So, gamma they are inside gamma okay they are inside gamma inside gamma closed curve. If you have that this is actually equal to 2 pi i times sum of all residues of f of z at z equal to these singular points these are singular points because this is not analytic at the except these points. So, <coughs> these are the singular points z equal to z i residue here itself we write z equal to z i. So, i is from 1 to n. So, 0 to n. So, you have n plus 1 uh, singular points. So, whatever may be the singular point you can find the residue different kinds of singular points or most of the examples which you see you may have only a uh, poles simple poles so that you can easily calculate the residues. So, that is how you can find the residues then you have this uh, expression. So, integral over a closed curve this uh, complex integration is actually 2 pi i times residue of that function. So, you can calculate this residue and uh, <coughs> that is exactly what we were talking about in the last video. Let me let me briefly go there and explain you. So, if I use this Cauchy uh, residue theorem uh, what you have is if you if I consider this integral if you want to evaluate this integral you have to consider this uh, this integral over this closed uh, curve like this this is called Bromwich contour. So, that by as r goes to infinity it has all the negative roots inside because this f bar of s e power st is analytic this side. So, all wherever it is not analytic it will be only this side left hand side of this line. So, it will have all the poles if f of s has a poles or a singular points all are the left hand side as r goes to infinity this Bromwich contour will have all its uh, singularities inside this curve. So, by the Cauchy residue theorem integral over this closed curve this is equal to 2 pi i times 2 pi i times all the residues all the residues of this function at all the singular points inside. Okay. But what is the left hand side? Left hand side is this uh, total integral, but one can show that because of the behavior of f bar of s over this uh, piece, this circular piece, we can actually show that this integral is actually going to 0. So, the contribution is only over this line, that means what you end up is only this integral, 
left hand side will be only this integral. So, that is the reason 1 by 2 pi if you divide. So, this is equal to sum of all the residues. Okay. So, if you can find all the residues, residues where f of z this function has uh, singular points, e power st is a analytic function. So, f of s or given f of s is only having if you, wherever in the you can easily find what are the at what points they are it is not analytic function. So, those are singular points at those singular points you find the residue and that will be this uh, uh, inverse transform of inverse uh, Laplace transform of the function f bar of s. So, anyway we will see that uh, we will try to give you some more examples of uh, how to find uh, this residues okay Cauchy residue theorem is this uh, let me in the next video I will I will give you uh, in the next video I will try to present how to how do you find for simple functions how do you find the residues and what are the different ways to evaluate some real integrals. So, that so you need only this uh, Bromwich contour integral and in but in the next video I will try to explain you how to do this contour integration technique for uh, when you have uh, different types of integrations okay some real uh, type of integrals how do you evaluate using cont this contour integration technique or Cauchy residue theorem how do you make use to evaluate some real integrals okay. So, this is what we will see in the next video and then uh, we will get back to this uh, finding uh, inverse Laplace transform of uh, general uh, Laplace transform that is f bar of s using this Bromwich contour okay. So, this is what we will see in the next video and later videos thank you so much. Mm -hmm.